Good evening, folks. Triple Crown here, coming to you from Vancouver, British Columbia. Continuation of the Italy turn, an overview for the Global War 1939 dress rehearsal solo game. So we're going to be doing some overview of Italy. This is the fascist Italy symbol. Um, Italy starts with 26 IPP in their economy, and they start the game with 26 IPP to spend. Now, like Italy and every variant of Global War or BBR, um, Italy wants to do a lot, but does not have the resources to quite do everything. So there's been a few uh, new changes to the game. Not as many as the other nations, but um, there has been one fairly significant change. First, we're just gonna have a look at the setup chart and just look at these symbols here. So you can see the Italian fascist symbol in the middle, and to the left is the Italian co-belligerent um, flag. And to the right is the National Republican Italian flag. So we're going to get into what those mean in a few minutes. Um, just going to go over some of the NOs. So Italy gets plus three if the access to the Vichy control three of the four ports, which are Greece, Cairo, Gibraltar, and Marseille. That's pretty standard. Plus two if the Med is cleared of allied surface warships. And Italy must be at war to receive this NO. And plus two if the Axis control territories in the Middle East, Iran, Iraq, Southern Iran, and Tehran. Now there's been one little wrinkle, which historically is correct, that I want to go over in the Middle East. So these four territories here. Iran, the three territories are all pro-allied. Iraq starts the game pro-Axis. However, in some games, these are all pro-Axis, or some games they're pro-Allied. Um, so what are they? Well, historically, Iraq started World War II supporting the Axis, and then they changed their allegiance to the Allies. Now, why would they do that? Well, a few reasons. They were concerned about their economy, where they can sell their oil to, and where can they get their oil to, and also who's gonna provide them security. So historically, the allies sort of turned the tides in Africa, and around that same time, Iraq changed their allegiance to the allies. So. On, we're saying by round seven, if Iraq is not under Axis control, it will change its allegiance to the Allies. So basically what we're saying is, Axis, hurry up, get in gear, and get over here and annex us or we're gonna change our allegiance. So that is the little wrinkle there. Now the other, um, Actually, first I'm just going to point out this. This is the Italian air transport, the Fiat G12, which now starts the game. But I'm getting into um, painting new units. And you can see it's got the little fascist uh, roundels on the wing and the, uh, the white stripe, which is uh, historically is accurate, um, that you can see there. So that is a, these are all water slide decals. Um, I'm going to zoom in actually from HBG. Um, so yeah, I'm quite uh, still getting into painting stuff. So that's how that looks. Just wanted to show you the Fiat G12, which is a new unit. So Rome used to be a victory city, meaning that the Americans or the allies captured Rome, they'd win the game um, if they held it for one full turn. Well, that historically, um, did not happen at all. Um, in fact, lots of other things happened with Italy 
um, and we're gonna go over that. But just gonna say for the those who are not familiar, the map logistics in the Atlantic make it very difficult for the Americans or the British to make it to Gibraltar. That is for the Americans, even coming from a naval port, it's two, it's two full, it's a lot. So it's one, two, three. So they can make it here. So the, it's actually four sea zones away. That's what I'm trying to, what, what I'm trying to tell you. So that might not sound like a lot, but when you're trying to check guys across, um, that, is, that extra turn, believe it or not, is, it makes it very difficult for the Allies to also get into the Mediterranean. But strangely enough, for the Allies, or for the Americans to get, it, get across to do a landing in Normandy or Bordeaux, it's only three movements. They can go one, two, three, or one, two, three to make it to England. So, so typically, I wouldn't say you see a lot of strategies just based on logistics to make it to Gibraltar and then from Gibraltar make it through and go um, to try to take Rome. So if it's going to happen, it's probably going to happen from the British forces down here, but you never know. Or maybe it's going to be a scenario where, and this is why I felt it was necessary to change this. If the Americans or the British have done a landing here, and to get a victory, what is the softer target? Berlin or Rome? You're going to hit Rome every single time if you've done a landing here and you've got, say, I don't know, 20 or 30 units, and Germany has 20 or 30 units, and Italy's you know, got half that many because their economy is smaller, you are going to hit Rome. So it needed to be changed, folks. Um, so how, what are we going to do to change it, or, or what happened? Well, historically, when the Allies started taking these islands down here, Sicily or Sardinia, the Italian king, I'm going to actually read this out to you because it's kind of neat. But So we're going to say um, for, you have to capture Rome to trigger this, not those, not those two islands I just pointed out. But this is historically what happened. When Rome is captured by the Allies, if this occurs during gameplay, Italy will remain pro-allied for the remainder of the game. It's no longer a victory city, meaning the game is over. Historically, King Victor Emmanuel III dismissed Benito Mussolini as prime minister. In addition, signed an armistice with the Allies and formed a, the new pro allied Italian co-belligerent army with a purpose to fight alongside the Allies. Subsequently, Germany rescued Mussolini from prison and propped him up as the leader of the Fascist Social Republic Party and formed the Italian National Republican Army. It's almost like they're fighting. They're so they're still fighting for control of Italy, but um, but basically um, that's what happened. So what does that trigger? Well, it triggers another scenario that is similar when Paris falls. So Italy will remain pro-allied for the remainder of the game. And if the Italy, sorry, if the Germans or Italy still controls Turin, um, the Italians also freed a bunch of people from prison that ended up joining this National Republican Army. So we're saying if the Italians control Turin, they will receive one free infantry per turn. They no longer have an economy. Instead, that economy will go to the new co-belligerent Italian government in Rome. So they do not lose their money to whoever. That money stays in Italy and it gets spent by the, on the next turn. And Italy is now going to go on the next UK turn um, and spend the money that they should have been spending um, fighting the Allies. Instead, now they're going to be spending it fighting the Axis. So what happens to the rest of the units? Well, historically, all anything in the water, so anything, you know, on a transport, an aircraft carrier, a fighter, um, any Navy joined the Allies. So it joined the co-belligerent national, either Navy or Army, whatever you call it, but under that flag. 
However, any Italian units that are fighting, you know, in Russia, they, they are going to join the Italian National Republican Army, okay? And any territory they capture, the money's gonna go to, towards Germany, but they are gonna still continue fighting uh, under the guidance of the uh, German military, okay? So they're gonna, they're gonna go on the next German turn. So what do we do with the rest of the stuff? Well, that's where it's kind of going to be similar to France. We are gonna roll for territories. Or sorry, for units. But for the territories, let's just say, for example, there's Italian units mixed in with a German unit. Well, that territory here in Sarinthia is going to become part of the National Republican um, government. So we're gonna, so you would replace that roundel on there. So the, the roundel with the, the, the beautiful looking eagle on it. I don't know why that, I just think that, that uh, so there's gonna, we're gonna have a roundel that looks like this. You're gonna place it on there. That remains um, National Republican. If there is no German units present, it's going to become co-belligerent, okay? Now, once you determine who owns all the land, that's when you roll for units, okay? So it's gonna be similar for France, for Vichy or Free French, a one to six becomes co-belligerent and moves to the, and the nearest co-belligerent friendly or allied territory, a six to 12, becomes Italian National Republican Army and is moved to the nearest National Republican Army or friendly Axis territory. So it's just the units that are remaining that move. The ones in Russia still fight Russia. The ones, the naval units, anything in the water um, joins the allies. So that is fairly significant. Um, historically, um, I really like this addition um, BBR does have something similar, but not, um, but this is a little bit different and, and a little bit more historically accurate. And what I've, feedback I've had is one of the things people love the most about this game is rolling for units. So here, folks, it might not happen every game, but if it does, you're probably gonna have to, you know, on the setup chart backs, pull this out and go over on how to do it. Um, so I think the, the a, a term that Hilltop uh, likes to use is the, the fruit or the juice in the fruit is worth the squeeze. So I think this is worth putting in the game. Um, and so yeah, that is the major difference. So the Italians and the Germans have to be careful about, you know, careful not to lose Rome. So we're gonna, as you can see, we've got, uh, everything's set up to go. So we're actually just gonna continue on with the Italian turn. So they have 26 IPP to spend. They are getting, purchasing a colonial, not a, a military base, two destroyers and a transport. Now, the fact that Syria is still under um, Access control, or it's now Vichy. This is a game changer. So what the, and I debated about what I should do here. But what I wanted to do this turn is I feel I need to at least kill Greece or capture Greece or kill as many units as I can. But also I need to shut the front door to the Middle East. And how do I do that? By taking Transjordan. But my navy is going to be under. Actually, it won't be, so I don't need to do that. But anyways, we're gonna do it anyways, because we wanna protect our Navy. So we are going to uh, be sending our Navy to this sea zone here, and we're going to, the Germans next turn are gonna be building an air base here. And all of the Italian fighters are going to be here. And we can also bring, with the air transport, one guy over, over here to Syria. Um, but we're gonna, Anyways, we're going to get into how this is all accomplished. Um, 
So we have sev seven battles to declare. <laughs> Three of them are walk-ons in this territory. So we're just going to go ahead and do them. So one infantry is walking from um, Ethiopia. And remember, folks, these territories are not worth anything. So he's leaving a territory that's worth a dollar into one that's worth nothing. So just, just be aware of that. And same with this territory in Uganda. Not worth anything. So um, one infantry from Cyrenthia. Actually, you know what? We're going to send both into, into Upper Egypt. And one is going into Alexandria. So that's um, those are that but that's that battle there. This submarine. See now that the Allies can't make it in, it's we, we're gonna we're gonna send two. Uh, no, just one. We're gonna send one submarine that's currently in the sea zone. Now that oh yeah, we're declaring war on the British. So <laughs> officially declaring war on the British. Um, it's gonna go after this destroyer. We're declaring an attack on Greece. So one infantry from Alexandria. Actually, you know what? We're gonna get into the simpler battle first. So one transport, we're, we're declaring a battle on Transjordan. So one transport, and this is, you're gonna see another little wrinkle from, from this sea zone. It's going to grab an infantry from Turin and an armor from Sicily and come down one, two, three to this sea zone down here. And it's allowed to do this, folks. If you're in the same sea zone, drop off one infantry in Transjordan as a blocker and drop off the, the small armor in Syria. Okay. Now, because I don't want to forget this. See, now I am not going to be wobbling around. The air transport in turn is going to grab one infantry and fly one, two, three, four, five and land in Syria. I'm going to chip that out for a guy. I should have already done it, but so that's happening there. So remember folks, a little wrinkle in this game, you're tra if it's in the same sea zone, you can unload units in different territories, which I think a lot of us might like that rule. So how are we going to attack Greece? Well, because we only have one transport left and this is the, the problem. So one infantry is gonna come down from Albania See, now that I'm doing that, I could leave the destroyer behind now that I'm blocking that. Yes, I will do that for the extra bump, okay? So the transport's gonna pick up the Italian Bersaglieri and a small armor and drop off in Greece with a custom bombard of a battleship because I can now leave the battleship behind. And actually, I'm going to be actually sending another submarine into this battle here after that destroyer. Because what I realized, folks, is when I shut the front door here in Transjordan to the Med, um, these guys cannot come through. So I don't need to send my whole Navy um, here. So that is a big revelation. Now, it took me a while to think about what I was going to do. I initially, I didn't want to spread my forces too thin. So we're only going in here with three ground units in degree. So we need to support that attack. And if we don't take it, well, there is a German armor that can follow up the following turn. But we are going to hit it with the entire Italian Air Force. So there is two tactical bombers and two fighters and a bomber that can reach. So basically everything's coming from an air base and the bombers and tacticals, sorry, the tacticals and fighters are all gonna have three spots and the bomber is gonna go one, two. It's gonna actually have a whole bunch, but they're all gonna land in Syria. So I'm not gonna mark that. So that is a, uh, um, 
So either we're gonna take it, or if they get five hits, we could lose some aircraft. So that's a little bit of a risky battle, but sometimes, folks, you gotta take these chances. And that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we know we're leaving um, Tripoli. Yeah, we're, you know what, he's just gonna move over now. We're gonna give up Tripoli um, and reinforce um, Cerinthia. So, so there we go. Time to roll some dice. So let's roll for the, the battle for the British destroyer in C zone 38. So these are the two gray that are attacking. We have a blue defending. Let's go. And um, mutual destruction, so one and one. So we lose a submarine, the British destroyer is sunk. Now, the Bursaglary attacks at a four when paired with an armor. So that is a nice little bonus. So the um, small, the my, my brain is drawing a blank. The armor attacks at a four as well. So it's a, a light armor. So two at four. Um, the coastal bombard of the battleship at a six. The two fighters at a six. The tactical bombers, we're going to say they are a seven. And two more fours with the, this is actually a heavy bomber. Um, that's not a medium bomber. So it's the P-108, that's a heavy bomber. So it actually attacks three at four. So that's what the heavy bombers do. Wow, forgot about that. I almost caught myself. So a little bit of a, a, little bit of a bonus. And there is, we could do it together. Um, five at two. It's getting a little bit long in the video, so Five at two defending. We're gonna roll them all together. Now we either wanna kill it or weaken it. And we do not want to lose aircraft, so. So the defender scored two hits. And the attackers did not one, two hits. Very, very, not very good at all. <laughs> oh, that was a tactical. It's actually three hits. So they're gonna lose three infantry. We are gonna lose um, the burst of glory and the light armor. This was a risky battle, folks. Now do we wanna continue? So we lose you know what, I forgot to roll. Um, there's another two. There's one infantry you forgot to roll. Because so I had two infantry coming in. One one came from, so we're gonna roll it. That was, oh, I needed a two to hit, that was a miss. So that's what's left. That's, do we continue on? Yes, I think we continue on. Yes, we, we lose the Costa Mombard as well, so. Hopefully they don't get two hits with their fours. And they got one hit and we got two hits. So we lose our armor, but we kill everything. Mutual destruction, which means we don't actually take the territory, which also means we do not have to roll for these ships. So in some ways that's good because we're gonna collect our NO this round. So if we had, we, we'd actually could choose to lose an aircraft and take it, but um, you know, the fact that the Germans are right there with their one uh, small tank, let them have it, save an aircraft um, and survive to fight another day. It sucks to lose those three guys, but um, they did their job and we did our job. So. So the rest of the Italian Navy is going to come over here and see zone 47. 
and that's a massive armada. So the, the, the battleship stays behind, and the transport stays behind. So, it probably was a mistake for the British not to take that Syrian territory because it had that not happened, this, this would not have happened and it was just too good of an opportunity. For the Italians not to take it. So that is going to flip over. We're flipping over. Sorry, folks, just making this a little bit smaller. So you can kind of, or zooming out a little bit. We're going to flipping over that. That didn't happen. We didn't capture that or that. Okay. All these Italian units in Rome are going to move up to Anzio. And these Italian units are going to stay there. They can't go anywhere. So, okay, placement of new units. The two destroyers are going to go in C-Zone 40 with the transport. And the military base is going to go in Tobruk, which is vacated. So Italy is going to get their NO for clearing the med of enemy warships. But they do not get their NO for the ports, and they do not get their NO for... Um, the Middle East yet. So, so yes, folks, that is the summary of the Italian turn. Um, you can see they've got some transports ready to go. And so if the British here are a little, a little bit of a pickle now, because do they reach out and kill these, these surrounding guys here? Do they kill the guy in Transjordan? Um, or do they stay home and build? Um, and if they build, everyone's going to be that much closer because they've got three transports or no two transports here and another transport here they can grab a guy and um, attack Cairo next turn so um, yes and it all had to do with this base in Syria and it was probably a mistake for the British not to send their one infantry in an armor and take it because um, otherwise this is off the board and now remember folks the Germans can build facilities there. That's why they're allowed to build an air base. They don't have to do it next turn. They don't have to now because um, the Met is closed. Even if, yeah, so wow. I might have just made a blunder, but sometimes, folks, you see these things um, after the fact. And in a lot of this game, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing a little bit on the fly. And uh, so learning process as I go. And something, folks, uh, we're going to close here. I'm probably going to do a round summary video for any everybody that doesn't want to watch, but just want to talk about the benefits of doing YouTube games or games via WhatsApp, sort of in this fashion. Um, I think there's a huge advantage because you get to study the board sometimes a little bit longer and strategy plan and think about what you want to do. You get to talk to your teammates if it's a joint game and, and discuss strategy, which is always fun. But I think the biggest benefit is when you're not, when you're between rounds or whatever's happening, you have this pause, this time um, to think about the game. And your brain's busy, it's active, you're occupied, you're happy. And um, I think that's good for you folks. Um, I think it's healthy and... Um, and yeah, it, make, it makes you smarter. It makes your, you know, increases your brain power. So one last non-com, this guy here is gonna move in there. Should probably 2d2. 
Yeah, let's do two. Why not? Creep everybody forward. So anyways, folks, thank you for watching and stay tuned for a round recap video.